Welcome, Stu, to Metalidium Pages. It's a great pleasure to talk with you about, about the blindfolded and led to the woods and this new album, Amorti, related to the meta world. So we're starting, bueno, we're starting with a common question, I think. Uh, this new album was composed and written during the pandemic because it's two years of difference from the from the from the previous one from Nightmare Withdrawals. And a curious thing about the, the comparison of the sound of the first day and be, before this and this new one is that the before is like the previous the pandemic, and now you are before the pandemic. Oh yeah, after the pandemic. Yeah, yep. So the album <clears throat> we actually pretty much had the album written when Nightmare with Jewels came out. Um, it took us quite a while to get Nightmare with Jewels out into the world. Um, so we were lucky enough when Prosthetic Records, when we joined in with them, that we we pretty much had an album ready to go. We just needed to record it. So we were able to turn it around quite quickly. Um, but yeah, the it was, it was definitely very challenging Um writing recording and practicing during the pandemic um it definitely had a lot of challenges so yeah um we got it done as as quick as we could though because we wanted to to have our new music out there you know it was mm -hmm. ready to go pretty much so <laughs> okay okay so uh uh but i i i know i know that the ballad the, the first album the second and third were are released by yourself uh, for the first time now you are with prosthetic records one of the biggest labels into the metal world. So into this aspect, so how do you do deal with this more attention? Because in the first, you all, you did all by yourself, promotion, publicity, etc. But now all all these kind of aspects are related with the promotion of the, with Will, the Becky from the prosthetic records. Yeah, it's, it's actually amazing. Um, like the first three albums, you're right, we did fully independently. Um, but Nightmare with Draws was the first album where we, we really took it really seriously and, and dug in as much as we could. Um, we felt that we had really kind of found our sound and who we wanted to be on that album. So, um, yeah, now that we're with Prosthetic, it's amazing. Like, there's a whole lot more opportunities. Um, we really want to get overseas and play more shows around the world. So that's kind of our main goal. So being with a label like Prosthetic is is making those goals um, a little bit easier. Yeah. Great, great. So, uh, well, all all uh, when I listen to this new album, blended from Rejected Obliteration, is that this new album is more calm or more relaxed than the first one, than, than the previous one, Nightmare with Wolves. Well, night Nightmare with Wolves was more technical progressive a lot of abstract into the aspects and now you are more relaxed into this so perhaps we can we say that this pandemic is affecting to the way to compose because when a lot usually when a musician feels a lot of chaos externally talking about the economics and the music always are more calmer more relaxed no more no more faster no more chaos so how do you why why do you decide to, to change the well, no, the way to do the way of the music on this new album. Um, <clears throat> I think one of the reasons was it was quite important for us not to make that same album again. I think we want to always um, catch people off guard and do something different with every release we do. Um, and I guess, yeah, there it's probably a little more. Um, I think we we tried to create more atmosphere with this new album where Nightmare with Draws was quite frantic and crazy. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess going in a more atmospheric direction. But then I can tell you that the next one will be even different again. And <laughs> there'll be more surprises on the next one. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're always trying to change and do something different and catch people off guard. But I think um, <clears throat> with some of the, like, lyrical content, on rejecting obliteration um i guess it's it's a darker kind of more moody album um maybe a little bit more serious lyric wise because a lot of the lyrics are sort of about things that have happened to us during the writing of that album and i guess we were trying to capture those sort of feelings musically which 
isn't always easy, but I think it it lends itself to a different type of atmosphere. Okay, okay, okay. All the rest, but I don't know. So, well, I think you, well, when I when I spoke with Stacy, yeah, with Stace, uh, with Stace at the uh, two two years ago for the last album, uh, I remember what the this night the, the nightmare with Drawwolves was a lot of attention. Well, has a lot of attention or had had a lot of attention from the media because all the, the last album appears and well, your previous album appears in, in a lot of tops of the year, tops of the month, good reviews, 10, 5, etc. Et so now, two years pass from this, from the last album. So how do you, how do you see this? Perhaps do you, perhaps do you see some kind of pressure because bef the, and be before was an amazing and now this album has a different direction. But, but at the same time, you have a little pressure to the media to, to see, to expect more things about the blindfold and left of the woods. Yeah, I guess there is a little bit of pressure, but it's not something I think we're really too concerned about. Um, I think what we want to do is just make solid albums and um, albums that people can listen to from start to finish um, and sort of capture what's going on in our lives with our, with our music. So, um, yeah, it was crazy that Nightmare with Jewels had so much attention. Uh, we didn't expect that. So it was all very new to us. And I guess this was, this is all very new to us as well, because like you say, people do have expectations now that, um, you know, <laughs> um, maybe, yeah, this, this is something we haven't experienced before. So following up, <clears throat> that album it is definitely like challenging but i think you can get too hung up thinking about that kind of stuff you know uh we're just kind of focusing on the music and um one thing that we've noticed with the new songs is we've done uh three shows now playing some of the new stuff and it's really great live i think the um like the atmosphere and the slightly more drawn out sections um uh, actually making for a really good live uh connection with the crowd so one thing we notice with nightmare with draw songs is that it's really hard to mosh to <laughs> because it's constantly changing really quickly um so yeah it's been cool to have a bit more like crowd participation with our new stuff mm, okay okay well you are you are in the band since the beginning since 2010 so now more than more more than 50 years well no more than 15 years 10 years 15, 15 years passed from the first album when you start when uh with lean down by the death core scene with my vessel in diaries so now since your second album you start to do more experimentation things with a lot of a lot of all the kind of steals uh, and i saw a little that says a lot of reviewers say that this your last album was more like a Technical avant-garde um, dead metal. I don't know why they put the, the people put a lot a lot of things avant-garde. But <laughs> they, they love to <laughs> they love to do well, avant-garde. I don't know. So, <laughs> uh, so how do you define the evolution in the sound of the blind fallen and led to the woods? It was it was thinking this the way to to evolve to evolve from the death core to to more technical and progressive stuff. Or perhaps it was more thinking to say, hey, this is not, not like thinking, like the first time is not thinking. I think the evolution has kind of come with uh, us as people like growing up. So those earlier albums we were in, you know, like 19, 20 years old. Um, and we didn't sort of take the band as seriously as maybe we should have. So as we've grown up and had more life experiences, um, I think the way we look at our music has changed quite a lot. So now we're trying to, um, I guess, make music that connects with people that maybe have had similar experiences in their lives as we have had. Um, like this, this, uh, this new album, like a lot of the content is, is real life things that we have lived um and you know talking about some of the traumas that that we have as human beings so it's quite real stuff like we we you know i was a little bit concerned that we were making ourselves really vulnerable with releasing some of this stuff but um 
you know i'd rather us be singing and playing music about stuff that's real and and true to us than writing kind of like fantasy sort of stuff if that makes sense um <laughs> i think yeah we're really trying to express ourselves in in a genuine way hmm. okay well i'm talking about now especially from the name of the of the band I remember when the, the deathcore deathcore scene appears in the world 2005 six. There's a lot of bands that like impending doom, Latin, a lot of huge names, large names, so no small names into the. This is a, this is a curious detail about the deathcore because large names, large names, large names, a lot of bands. And now the curious thing is the blindfolded and led to the woods is a is a large name. So who came with the idea? to put the blindfold at the lead to the woods. And the curious thing about this aspect is that usually the albums from you are two words because religion of liberation, nightmare withdrawals, mother adoxography, and my Vaseline diaries that the only that the only album that has three words, but then <laughs> all two words and but the name is more than there's more than four words. Yeah, I think the band name is is really long but like you say like in like 2009 2010 that sort of era um there were lots of bands with like re really long names and our band name just kind of stuck you know we, we could have maybe changed it along, along the way but i think i think it's just who we are and we've been that for so long now that we're never going to change it um but uh yeah, I, I, we we try to have like a little bit of consistency between our albums, so the the two word title kind of works well. Um, but yeah, as I said, we don't want to do like the same album twice. But I think having a little bit of consistency, especially between Nightmare Withdrawals and Rejecting Obliteration, I think there's a lot there between the two albums that connect. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, all the aspects fun. I think one I I usually I usually I usually think that the fan has is that when a band enter when a big label like is prosthetic records always you left the underground side because it's normally you have more gigs more tours more more videos more more attention of the media it's completely normal this aspect so but um but the curious aspect is that the uh, now uh, is that you are with prosthetic at the same time. You did a cover with Elite and Cantor, so a lot of attention. So, who came with the idea to do the cover art with the, the Elite and Cantor? Perhaps was the was a was a deal the label with them, with him, or perhaps we were you with him. Uh, so we have always been a big fan of his work. I think his stuff is absolutely absolutely amazing. And when I saw the Venom Prison album cover. I was like, man, that that is so cool. Like, I would love to work with this guy, but we didn't think we would ever be able to make it happen because, um, like you say, he's such a such a big name. But yeah. we asked Prosthetic if they could sort of help us get in touch with him because we really wanted to work with him. And um, luckily enough, they had worked with him in the past. They they were able to um get in contact with him, and um, yeah, and he we basically sent him the kind of ideas that we had but we gave him pretty much full creative control over the artwork so um yeah really cool i love love what he did i love the fact that it is like a cycle and it all connects when you open up the album and everything it looks awesome mm. okay all the detail about this about the music and we spoke a few minutes ago about the the label or the one well, the label of the genre that you had in your in your previous records because you did deathcore now you are more technical progressive stuff and the question is why do you, why do you think the media the fan the reviewer always related your music with the avant-garde style i don't know why but i saw some reviews that the they say that the blindfolded plays technical avant-garde death metal i don't know why and how do you define the music or the how where do you put the the, the blindfolded style is technical progressive music or, per, or perhaps it's not anymore like dead metal it's more like extreme metal everything's possible now <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a hard question because i feel like 
a lot of the reviews and stuff that we see, a lot of people call us something different. So I'm not really sure what genre you would put us into. Like, for me, I feel like it's just progressive death metal. I, I don't I don't really label it as anything more than that. But there is definitely elements of like dissonant death metal. There's definitely elements of technical death metal. Um, but yeah, I, I always, I like people to, to make up their own mind about it. You know, like, what do you think it is? <laughs> you know, um, the, the genre thing doesn't, doesn't concern me too much. It's like, I just think it's death metal at the end of the day. It's heavy, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, curious thing about the the especially for bands from New Zealand and Australia too. Always the bands in that side of the world are doing like the things very different because as you can see, Australia has Alarum, Ulcerate from New Zealand, you from New Zealand too. So why always the band the bands from Australia, New Zealand, this kind of this other part of the world? are very attached from the technical and progressive stuff. What kind of influence do you have from your society, from the music that you got in the 80s and the 90s? Because I think it's not because Australia and New Zealand are far away from the Europe, US, that always has a, a different media that are from, from, the, from South America too. So how, do you, how what kind of influence did you take to go in, to lean down to the progressive and technical stuff? Yeah, it's a, it's quite a hard question to answer because you, you're right. There are a lot of bands between New Zealand and Australia that are doing stuff really differently. Um, <clears throat> I think New Zealand, part of the reason is we're such an isolated country. We're right at the bottom of the world. It's not easy for when you live in New Zealand to to travel because it's it's extremely expensive to get anywhere on a plane <laughs> from New Zealand um so a lot of people in New Zealand kind of don't ever leave the country they just live in New Zealand forever um so it creates kind of like an isolation in our society and but but with that I think there are a lot of just really creative people in the country who not just in music but in art and everything and and maybe that isolation has created sort of like our own little bubble where people are just striving to do new, weird, different things. But musically, I think it's quite amazing because we're constantly being surprised by what people are doing. Um, people are coming up with new ideas. <clears throat> people always want to be different. So, <laughs> um, you know, I'm I'm not sure why we ended up in the playing the kind of style of music that we do but um you know we're having a good time doing it and and yeah it, it's a weird one but but it's cool I, I love the variety that we're able to see when we go on tour and things like that mm -hmm. okay okay so now i will I'm talking about the future plans of this to, uh, to release of this new album so what are the future plans that van has for this new album perhaps release more videos Perhaps uh, I saw that you will play in a, in, a, in a tour there, and perhaps you will play more more tours because you are not with prosthetic now. The now you were linked with more people in in the war and you especially. Perhaps you will embark in a, in in a Europe tour or perhaps in US tour or who knows? Because uh, since last year, a lot of Australia bands came to Latin America because. Um, I don't know. Psychropic is what Psychropic was here a few a few weeks ago was Dead Hammer too. So a lot of bands, a lot of bands appears from Australia to here. Perhaps you will you will schedule some dates here. Yeah, uh, touring is definitely on the forefront of our minds. Like we would love to get overseas. We'd love to get to Europe. We'd love to get to America, South America, um, Asia. We we kind of want to get out there as much as we can. Um, We've, we're playing in Australia this week. We've got four four shows in Australia. So, yeah, it's just a bit challenging for us being in New Zealand. It's It has its own travel challenges, but we're trying to figure out how to overcome those. Um, and Prosthetic are definitely helping us 
um, you know, be able to figure out how we can get out of New Zealand and and further into the world. So yeah, we're we're chipping away at things. Um, I think the the next plan for for this year as well is to actually start working on the next album. So yeah, we're constantly trying to keep things moving in the background. So so we're always always working on something, always trying to trying to push ourselves to our next goal. Yeah, but touring is definitely uh, probably our main goal at the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, now speaking about the well, no, I think you New Zealand was the uh, New Zealand was the only country during the pandemic that can afford about playing live because I saw a lot a lot of live person during the pandemic with blindfolded in your social media. So, but you played just in just in New Zealand at that time. Now, as, as you told me, you will play in Australia and perhaps you will play in other in other parts of the world. So. For who persons that didn't at attend to the shows with night in the promotion, the nightmare withdraw withdrawals. So how will be the set list for the for the future presentations? Because the a lot of bands can promote at the end of the pandemic uh, their 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 new albums for the all the everything's closed at that time. So but now it's possible. So how how will be the set list? You will me you will be mix uh, nightmare and reject of uh, rejecting offerings rejecting obliteration songs or perhaps you will just focus on the last album um <clears throat> it's about half and half so you're right we didn't get to tour nightmare with jewels as as much as we liked so i feel like we are still touring that album because we haven't been able to play it um you know to uh, to a wider audience so the set list is about half and half at the moment um half nightmare with jewels half rejecting obliteration because I think it's really important we play those songs live, and um, yeah, yeah, we we yeah we we love Nightmare Withdrawals so much. So um, that's it's a really really important album to us. So I don't think we'll ever stop playing songs from that album. Um, yeah, we'll always keep it, you know, keep keep it balanced. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. One one detail that I well, no, I this is talking about the special for the music like a musician because a lot of musicians told me around the world that they, when when they play old songs they don't like it because it's old song we we need more material to play that's why we release a new album and so how do you feel now the with the experience to play old songs because and songs from nightmore withdrawals has two years old and usually the bands are more focused to present new songs and perhaps now you are preparing new songs for the next album it's completely normal so how do you feel now with the present old songs? Do you still have the same vibe that you got at the same time when you composed that album? Or perhaps you will play differently with new with new with, with new details alive? I think like sort of like as I said before, because we we didn't get to tour Nightmare with Jewels. So whenever we're playing in a new place, it feels like we're playing those songs to people for the first time. So I think um <clears throat> I don't feel like they're old songs um because we turned around this new album quickly um usually it was taking us about four years to put a new album together so because we turned this one around quite quickly they still nightmare with jewels still feels fresh to us it still feels like a new album um so it's quite a strange feeling that we have this new album out so quickly um but it, it's quite cool so so when we're playing now, it is all feeling fresh and still feeling new. Um, and the Nightmare with Jewels songs live are really fun to play. So, yeah, it's a, it's a good mix. Hmm. Okay, okay. Well, well, Stu, the sad times arrive at this interview. I hope you enjoyed this one doing this. Doing this, you are a terrific guy. Well, your, your previous record and this one are terrific, terrific, terrific albums. Perhaps do you want to add something to your Latin American fans and Metalero followers? Yeah, um, thank you so much for having me. Um, I uh, massively appreciate it, um, taking the time out. Uh, to everyone through Latin America, South America, thank you for listening to us, to, for supporting us. Um, we appreciate it so much. I I hope, I really, really hope that one day we get to come and play uh, through your countries. Like that is a dream of, of ours to get over to those countries. So yeah, keep supporting metal.